If you thought about having a photo studio, but you're not sure yet what's the pros, what's the cons, this video is going to help you out a lot. There's going to be five things that I think is going to make you a lot of money that I think is a positive for having a photo studio. And then there's going to be five things that I think maybe aren't the best ideas, the best reason for you to have a photo studio. All the information is from my own experience of owning a studio, renting many, many studios, people in my life that I know that I've worked with, and all that information is gathered here so that you can make a much more informed decision. Let's go to point number one, why it's good to have a photo studio. Number one, it's really got high income earning potential. Now, why do you say that? Let's break it down to if you had a restaurant, what would that require? The restaurant would say you got to buy food. You got to have new food all the time. You got to wash the linens. You got to have wait staff on holding, working, scheduled actually. In case people come in, uh, you got to have chefs. You got to have everything. Plus, you have all the regulations, all everything the government, your city requires, all the refrigeration, oven, utilities, etc clothing store you got to always and by the way the food is perishable clothing store the styles are very perishable and people come in people steal smash and grabs if you're in california and there's just a lot happening a photo studio would be let's just say theoretically a white space i would say white just so that's the most common you can have windows like you see behind me you could just have lights or you could have both a photo studio nothing is perishable in there People expect things to be scuffed up a little bit. All you really need to spend money on, like initially, are going to be some C-stands, some lights, um, some triggers, maybe if you want to rent cameras. My video at the end, a whole playlist is going to tell you how you can move around all that. And you don't have to, for example, I'll tell you how to bring in other people, make commissions off of everyone. It's just really good for your photo business. Our photo studio business so that is a pro i mean it's it all you're really doing you're selling two products to your photographers that are renting for you number one you're giving them space that they can create and number two you're giving them peace of mind that no one's gonna say hey you can't film here no more etc and they're in a good space no pun intended the second one the reason why it's good to have a photo studio, it's creative freedom. There have been so many times when I had my studio that at three or four in the morning, I'm thinking, I think I need to do this. I think I should move this couch here or I should uh, do this type of a photo shoot. You know what? I think I need to bring some people in and, and we're going to paint their bodies in black and have a really cool photo shoot. So much I could do there. All of that builds your portfolio. So not only are you going to be advertising the studio because you post on your social, but also you get to have that creative freedom that builds your portfolio. So that brings in more jobs as a director, a videographer, or a photographer. Let's go to point number three on why it's really a good idea to have your own studio. And I would just say flexibility of your own schedule, flexibility of what you want to bring in there, flexibility of days you want to work, days you don't want to work. Maybe you want to work around the clock, maybe you don't. If you've ever been in an Uber, sometimes you'll see people saying, well, I'm going to work until 11 or 12, maybe 1 o'clock, but once the bars let out at 2 in the morning, I'm just, I don't want someone throwing up in my car, so I'm going to turn off the clock and I'm going to go home. You could do something similar. That allows you to fit your other jobs, your other schedule around it, or you can work this sucker 24 hours around the clock and bring in other employees to help you run. You'd be surprised how many people would love to work late hours if only a studio was open. Point number four is amazing advertising for you, and I did this in my own studio. So I had a wall. That's a photograph of Kanye West that I photographed. That's Usher that I photographed, okay? I had those on this wall and people would come in here and people would say, oh, were those shot here? Because obviously it's Kanye, it's Usher, it's Sierra, it's Mariah, etc. Their talent is shooting with a photographer that rented my studio or their model or whoever, their friend. So there's always a person sitting. You know who's always sitting there? The friends of, the managers, the publicists, the agents of, etc. The, the CEOs, the marketing directors, etc. That's who's sitting there and they have to be on set, but they're a little bit bored and they're tired of checking emails and social media. So they're going to start looking around. They're going to start wandering around. We never poach other people's clients. We don't do that ever. But if my stuff is on the wall, like stuff behind me, you have the right to ask me who shot those. 
And people are always like, hey, were these things shot back here? I'm like, no, actually, that's my work. And they're like, that's your work? And I said, yeah. And then they would say, wait, you're a photographer too? Yeah. Conversation now started and you start getting clients from that. Hey, can I get your number? Can I get your email? I might have some work for you. That, that's a beautiful way of getting clients. People already coming in, these people that are coming into your studio, already are accustomed to hiring directors and photographers. You're never gonna poach and connect with someone else's client. That's bad ethics in business. But if you're sitting there and there's potential work in the future, nobody should be able to stop the conversation of happening between you and them. You just put your work up there. That's your branding. People would start saying, Walid, okay, I know the name, Walid. Dude, the guy with the white patch. Oh yeah, that's his studio? Okay, it's a branding thing. You could put up anything on these walls. You could put your logo, you could put your work, you could put your email and phone number. You could put your services on the walls. It's branding for your business and you're gonna do really, really well. And the fifth reason is fulfilling work. And I'll tell you why. Bringing in people, a family photo shoot in there and they use your space and they felt comfortable is fulfilling. Someone does a tasteful or whatever, whatever two consenting adults do, a boudoir shoot and she feels amazing about her body and somebody made her feel beautiful. That's kind of cool to have that in your studio. To have community days potentially where you help your peers come in and they take pictures, that's fulfillment. To let people use your studio for uh, yoga classes and meetings, that's fulfilling. So it's amazing for that, but also it's incredible branding. So when you have a studio as a photographer, people are like, yeah, um, she's so good and so is she, but she has her own studio. So we don't have to rent it. We don't have to pay additional for studio. Um, hair and makeup is there. All her gear is there. I just think that that's a better deal. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. I know it's a little bit more money, but let's do that. Now, can we talk about five reasons why you should not get a photo studio? And I'm not going to hold back. And if you thought I was opinionated on the five reasons why you should, wait until the five reasons why I think you should not. Number five, I'm going to tell you the investment, even though it's lower than I said, like a restaurant, etc., it still is fairly high. When you get into a commercial lease, at least where I'm at in Los Angeles, see, we have some protection for residential leases, but not really for commercial leases. When I was looking for my studio, a lot of these shady as hell owners would say, oh, wow, they're smoking their cigarette and they're like, oh, I could give it to you for one year. Hell no. So you think I'm going to take my money, build things out, and you're going to give me a one-year lease and then either A, you're going to jack up my rate so high and it's not limited like residential and then I'm stuck and I'm paying double or triple or what you're going to do is kick me out and then rent it to someone else or have a studio yourself. It sounds really negative, but you do have to think about these things. It's not just a white box. If it was just a white box, maybe... Well, it is a white box, but it still is like just getting it to be a white box is a lot of paint. That's a lot of time. Time is also money. So you're going to be painting things, fixing things up. Um, there's going to be things like cameras, Internet. So utilities are not the same as I found out the hard way when I had my studio. There is utility for a home and then there's utility for a commercial building. Commercial building, you can charge more. Why? Just because. Number two is that it's a competitive market. So when you are thinking, oh, cool, I got a photo studio. At the beginning, there wasn't a peer space when I opened my studio. You have a lot of competition now. So you have Gigster, you have Swimply is a newer one. You have um, peer space. Those are the three big ones now. Everybody's studio looks the same. Newer Godox lights, stands, everyone's got them. Camera rentals, the five top brands, everyone's got them. C-stands, same one. Gels, same ones. Paper rolls, same ones. Everyone has the same looking studio. So the question is, can you identify what is unique about yours and then can you go and uh, run with that? Keep in mind that if you're not a super marketer and you're like a, a super artist, but you're not the person that is always out there marketing, maybe you want to pull back knowing there is so much competition. On the flip side, that the websites I mentioned provide you clients you normally wouldn't get, but they do take a sizable chunk out of your pocket. Give and take. For some people, it's not their thing, but you need to know it's not always easy. There were times for a few weeks at a time, nobody would call me. 
Number three is seasonal fluctuation. So unless you live, let's like, say, in Los Angeles where it's warm almost year-round, some places people are like, uh-uh, there is ice coming from the sky. I don't want to go out there. Uh, nope. It's flooding outside. Lots of rain. I don't want to shoot. I don't want to have my event there. You know what? It's too dark. Maybe if you're more northern up, the, as, the, as the sun goes down, it gets dark faster. Uh, people want natural light, so you're not able to market your studio as often. So you have to look and see, okay, uh, what is going to be affecting my income? Is it going to be weather? Is it going to be lighting? What's it going to be? Sometimes you don't have the best heating. You don't have the best air conditioning. If it's too hot, people don't want to book. If it's too cold, people don't want to book. Remember, at the end of the day, it's just a big, big box. Cuatro. There are so many other aspects to owning a studio that we sort of forget when we romanticize it. So number one is you're like, I'm going to shoot a lot, which I mentioned to you. I'm going to be there. I'm going to run my own hours. I'm just going to have tons and tons of shoots and make a whole lot of connections. But you got to think someone has to sweep that sucker. Somebody has to clean up after everyone. Someone has to tr throw the trash away. Sometimes somebody made sure the toilet overflowed. So you're the one that's going to play plumber initially. And you got to take out all the trash. And there's so much that has to happen. You got to get up on time every day. If somebody has an early shoot, that's something you're going to have to factor in. There have been so many times that somebody wants to come in at 5 or 6 in the morning. And I'm cool with that, but I have a fear you got to wake up, you got to go to the studio. Wake up, go to the studio. Thank God, I never missed anything. But that's extra light layer pseudo trauma that you have to factor into everything. There's reviews online, Yelp reviews. People are nasty, people are mean. Majority of people are kind, but kind people don't leave reviews as much as the Karens do. Well, I got to go after each one and then fight back on each one. It doesn't happen that much, but there are people that do that. So keep that in mind. Just add it to the equation and see if that's what you want to do. The fifth one, the last one is going to be why you shouldn't do this is that, okay, I did say I mentioned marketing in number four. But it's more than that. Somebody has to come in and review the footage if something happens. There is liability potentially if something happens, if people are dressing and undressing a lot. There's liability if people are renting. There's liability if expensive piece of equipment are stolen or lost or dropped on your property. See, at least in America, people can sue for any reason. Doesn't mean they're going to win, but you can. it's a very litigious country. There are studios that I have rented in the past. Even my own studio, when I owned my studio, Studio, I got tired of photographing on certain angles. I'm like, I got that wall. I got this floor. I got that wall. I got this wall. I got the rooftop. How much more can I have with the same backdrop, right? So you have to constantly, constantly update. So it will work for you. I gave you five reasons why you should have a studio. I still believe very deeply in each one and I would still consider having a studio again for myself. Now, if I do another studio, there are changes that I would make to reflect a lot of these five cons that I just listed. This playlist right here is your gold mine for everything photo studio really urge you to spend some time and research there. You have questions, put that in the comments. I want to help you. I want to see you win. My work is available at walidazami.com and I'll speak with you next time.